We all know the comic market moves in a week, and we're here to tell you what's hot and cold. Three up, three down starts right now. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we're here to talk about that three up, three down. That's the hottest and coldest comic book market trends for this week. But real quick, before we get into it, Jack, we just aired the second episode of our podcast, Simple Man's Comics and Friends. What did you that, think? That's right. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I am having a blast working on this podcast. It's something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I know it takes Brian a lot of work on your end uh, to get that thing edited up for the community. But, again, we're, we're bringing on two guests from within the comics community. This week we took a, a unique approach, and we had two people from different walks of life. We've got – uh, Nico from comicbookspeculation.com, um, from the Comic Book Wars podcast, who does Nico Time interview show. If you haven't seen the Nico Time interview show, it's really, really top notch. Um, and Ben, the owner of Black Cape Comics, brought in a, a uh, retail shop owner who also is very prevalent in the uh, retail shop exclusive market, uh, specifically within independent comics. Um, we're talking about this week's kind of the hottest topics in comics. Um, and it was a great time. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. It's it's both on the YouTube channel as well as available wherever you get your audio podcasts. Again, that's going to be bi- bi-weekly. We're bringing that to you every other week. But remember, in those off weeks, if you don't get a chance to listen to the whole episode, we're going to cut that micro content. We're going to bring it to you topic by topic. Yeah, so definitely check that out. Simple Man's Comics Podcast. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever those audio podcasts are found. But we're going to get in that three up, three down, starting with that upward portion. And the first one we're talking about this week is Joker. Joker definitely seems to be hot right now. Yeah, and I really just tricked you into talking about Punchline, Brian, really. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I think that uh, if you look at what's going on with the Joker, everything going on with DC Comics right now. Three Jokers, Joker War. Right, so we've got the three Jokers, the Jeff Johns, uh, long-awaited story that's going to kind of give us some of these uh, new 52 hints that have been sitting, uh, you know, and we've been waiting for these answers, and I think we we're finally about to get it now. Again, after reading Doomsday Clock, I would say, take your time, expect, uh, expect delays, but either way, expect quality, because I really thoroughly enjoyed Doomsday Clock. Um, at the same point, we're talking punchline, right? Punchline's the hottest thing going in comics. I could have put it on the hot portion of this list, the up portion of this list, the last two weeks. We know it. We all know it. But uh, at the end of the day, her viability is as a sidekick. Is because while she's a super cool character, what makes her viable is the fact that she's related in some way, and I don't mean through blood, but to the Joker. Um, it is that Joker rub that is, and let's be honest, that's what made Harley Quinn's popularity. Um, the Joker is an iconic cult character as obvious by the fact that again, DC comics movie slate has been summarily unsuccessful with the exception of the off brand kind of done to the side, Todd Phillips Joker movie, which was rapidly successful. So it's the Joker is, is, really one of the flagships of DC Comics, maybe even more so in some ways than Batman, um, truly become an iconic character. And then, again, we talk about from the publishing side, we talk about the three Jokers, we talk about Punchline. Then we've got the 80th anniversary Joker issue that is being solicited. Now, we've Brian, you and I have talked about these. We love these, right? All these cool variants. This is another one. I dare you to walk into the shop on release day when this book comes out. And pick just one cover. When you're sitting there looking at an amazing, you know, Jim Lee and an amazing, uh, you know, I think there's a Del Otto. I think there's a Matina for you Matina people. Another thing, check out the podcast. We talk about that Matina art scandal. But, you know, there's just, there's a little something for everybody. So, yeah, the Joker's out there. I really think, and tell me what you think about this, Brian, because a lot of people have been against this book over the years, but I really think the Joker number one, that like 1975 kind of like maxi series is an underrated book because that Joker first appearance is, is not an attainable 
comic book for the average person. So I know Joker number one may be printed in large quantities. Uh, but again, we're talking about a book from 1975. I really think that's a good buy. Yeah. And I found that that's one of those books that you tend to find when you go to comic cons or sitting in those, those bin boxes where yeah. you pick up for fairly cheap and you'll find someone, I'll say very fine plus to, to low near mint for a decent price. I think I've picked some up for $3, $5, especially if you, we always talk about buying put them in a bundle of books and then then haggle how much for all these you usually get the price down pretty cheap but i i agree i I enjoy that book and i pick it up whenever i find it especially for cheap now i could really see that book having its day in the sun and becoming like a major key within the community um because people are just going to look for they're going to want that early joker and i know that there's some iconic neil adams covers but a lot of people are priced out of that and there's newbies coming into this this game every day then the next one we're talking about on the upward trend this week is those C2 E2 exclusive vans, especially with that Wolverine. We're seeing that one super hot right now, but there's other ones floating around there that are kind of hitting up on that price point, aren't there, Jack? Yeah, the Wolverine and the Venom the End are the ones that are getting the consistent amount of praise within the community, and rightfully so, right? They're both amazing variants. But there's a number of smaller press variants uh, that, like, uh, Cimarron, the Black Coast, has an amazing uh, C2E2 variant. There's a uh, Vampirella, uh, uh, Lucio Perillo version that was done. Um, there's, there's a number that are doing serious numbers uh, from C2E2. I think this is something, though, that hey, this happens yearly, right? So this is where I would say buy what you like. But – Hey, if you're a person that's got their hand in this C2E2 variant game, it kind of depends on where, what perspective you're co- coming from. Um, if you're paying the high prices for them for your personal collection, by all means, you buy what you like. But if you're buying these for hopes that these prices are going to sustain, they won't. Um, and the reason why they won't is because we're going to be able to insert whatever big convention goes on this year into this this section because this happens so when WonderCon comes up in in a few weeks and there's some WonderCon exclusives that people are going to be talking about those are the books that people are going to be chasing and then after that you know you'll have san diego comic-con and heroes con and um eventually maybe emerald city comic-con uh you know but in new york comic-con and all and expo here. dallas right right uh um you know there's there's just so many uh that People are going to be chasing the, the summer um, variants all, all year. And every, every couple of weeks, it seems like there's going to be some new group of them. And they're, all, they're going to be limited, and they're going to be amazing, and they're going to be well done. So there's nothing, it's nothing bad against these. It's just that the attention of the market is going to move. Um, and, and that's just naturally going to happen. So these, right now, this Wolverine and um, you know this Venom book are getting a lot of attention due to you know, being kind of like the hot books of the moment, but th- there will be less attention paid to them later. Now, that doesn't mean there'll be more quantity. They're t- t- you know, the, the books will certainly dry up. Um, but these books always sell the most now. Now, I say it al- also depends on what perspective you're coming from because I mentioned WonderCon. Brian and I are going to be heading out to WonderCon. Um, and, you know, I hope to be able to pick up a variant for whatever the con price is and then have it be selling for some obnoxious price, you know, after the weekend, you know, that's always what you hope to do. So if you're at, able to go to these conventions, and pick up these books for convention prices, it's, it's a great way to offset your costs of your convention trip. And we've talked about that before. And, and I know people, and I know Brian, we we both know people who have made a ton of money doing that. Um, but, there's a difference between having that accessibility and being able to do that and then chasing the current eBay prices of a lot of these hot books. No people that made some money doing it. Then no people that ate some books doing it also. Cause remember when those foil variants were all, I was just about to say DC foils. I already know where you're going DC foils. And there was another DC foil that actually did pretty well this weekend is that a flash 750 um, Jim Lee, but, yeah, there, you, you, you do have to make decisions when you're at the convention because these, these exclusives have become so prevalent. 
Um, there's a multitude of them at big conventions. You can't just buy every, every one and think you're going to be able to make money. And those DC foils were a prime example. People got left holding the bag. So then the last one we're going to talk about on the three up portion this week is mask. We were just talking about this recently, I believe on one of the videos, um, they just got a new director or writer for, for this movie. Right. And it, it's back in the news. Yeah, so you've got a director now. The director from Bad Boys 3 is now um, taking over the helm of Mask. We know that it's going to be a big part of the kind of like Hasbro shared universe. Um, I have speculated for a long time that uh, a, that John Cena's character in Bumblebee is Raven from Mask. Um, I think from the fact that the names match up to the several things from the look of John Cena – um, to the way he goes about acting is very similar to that character. Um, so this has actually surprised me, Brian, because you know that I love this stuff, right? This is, but Mask is G.I. Joe, right? It's bootleg G.I. Joe, but now it's basically become a part of G.I. Joe. And I love Mask because the fact that they're doing a Mask movie only further means we're going to get G.I. Joe and more Transformer stuff. So it excites me in general. Um, I'm surprised, to be honest with you, that the comic market picked up so quickly on Mask Number One. Mask Number One is doing good money. Um, it was on, you know, some of your favorite YouTube channels, hot lists and top lists, and all of that. What about the mini comics? Are they doing anything? Everything is getting a bump, but that's the point that I'm going to make: is what is throwing me off, and I don't know if it's a lack of knowledge about the subject, or. Uh, really what it is but mask number one is selling well um but there's a preview for mask number one and just like many books that dc comics came out with during that time like masters of the universe number one um like captain carrot and the amazing zoo crew um you know that teen titan 16 that people have chased at times um and just like uh you know some of the more well-known new teen titans with dc comics presents 26 um and uh you know batman and the outsiders with brave and the bold uh 200 which i think is the first appearance of katana and i think a lot of people don't realize because they haven't flipped through that book it's not like katana appears in brave and the bold she's it's just a preview for batman and the outsiders number one which in then turn is the first appearance of time nobody wants batman and the outsiders number one but they want Brave and the Bold 200. So why, when it comes to Mask, is Mask number one popular, but nobody is talking about the fact that it is previewed in s several issues for DC Comics. And maybe that's the problem, Brian, that it's previewed in more than one book. Same uh, way with Master of the Universe. I mean, you always see when you search for Master of the Universe, they got preview, preview, preview. But I mean, if they're like me. I'm like, I don't care, especially if it would be different if it was like in one book or one title. But if you have that preview spread out, it's no different than today where you get previews of certain books. You'll, you'll get a little buzz on them because people are like, oh, did you know, like, especially independent books is more prevalent than the, the big two. Um, but usually if there's a preview in Marvel or DC, like Strange Academy was previewed in on a right. bunch of Marvel books recently, right? A lot of people are like, all right, that's cool. But I think there's a a, a niche for those, but I don't think you see it as much of a My market. My only argument with these DC ones is because of Teen Titans and because of um, Brave and the Bold, we have precedent of the expectation on the market. And this is where I get so mad, Brian, <laughs> at the comic market for flip-flopping and jumping all over the place with these rules because, again, we have precedent here that says that these previews are the first appearance, not the issue number one. Otherwise. Teen Titans number one from 1980 is a massively undervalued book because nobody is listing that and calling that the first appearance of Raven or Cyborg or any of these characters because, again, DC Comics Presents is being looked at that. So I think Batman 387, albeit giant print run, Batman and the Outsiders 27, Blue Devil 16, Justice League of America 242, Superman 411, Tales of the Legion of Superheroes 327 and World's Finest Comics 319 are all books to look at. But here's the thing. While they were all printed in September of 1985, 
the print runs of those books are not all the same. I would conjecture just off the top that Blue Devil 16 would have probably the lowest print run of the group. Um, but I think these are all books that are just being just generally ignored in the market. I'm not trying to replace mask number one as like the key. Um, I'm just saying there is a precedent to say that it isn't. And I just, I don't know whether it's lack of knowledge within the community that these other previews exist, or if it's just with this one because of the inconvenience of the fact that it's Batman and it's Justice League and some of these high print run books, people don't want to jump on it. But I'm surprised that a book like Blue Devil 16, Batman and the Outsiders 27, or Legion of Superheroes 327 um, haven't gotten popular because they've got to be lower print run books. Yeah, and it'd be even better if it was a key issue book that had the preview in it. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is if they're going to make a mask movie, I want an Air Raiders movie. I like Air Raiders toy better better than Mask, by the way. You're going all the way down the <laughs> list. 80s. 80s for life. But so there's the three-out portion. Again, let us know in the comments what you guys think. What are your hot books? We are going to feature those comments in the next video. But we're going to move over right now to the three-down portion, starting with Storm Ranger. This seems like it was hot just a few, few weeks ago. So it is and it isn't. Um, store 11 is maintaining heat. Um, and I don't know if this is a chicken before the egg thing. So that book is selling consistently and been labeled the first full appearance of storm ranger, which is interesting because originally 10 had that hype and the discussion with 11 was, you know, it'll probably get labeled first full, but it's not as, it's not as big as 10. Um, that seems to have flipped. I don't know if when, if when the recent announcement about the Storm Ranger Empire one shot um, got put on like key collector, they highlighted eleven. If maybe that happened, if if that had an effect, or did they just hire highlight eleven because they had noticed eleven was selling? So I don't know which came first. So I couldn't put it on um, on the app for being you know the cause of the spike just the market decides and it seems like they've landed on that book, but the, the price that it's landed at is about $10. Um, 10 hasn't really moved incredibly, but it's about $10. Um, five is about 10 to 15 where you first get that costume. Um, but again, slow sales overall, not a ton listed, which really indicates the fact, Brian, that the print run is not huge on this book and that a lot of like collectors have socked these away and, I mean, you type in Storm Ranger into, into eBay, there's like 140 listings total. Um, the late printings are not moving above cover price. But I think where your surprise is where I'm going to say this is a buying opportunity. So we know that Storm Ranger is getting a one shot. We're, we've read articles where things have been hinted to by Marvel that Storm Ranger is quite possibly the big bad for Miss Marvel. And we've said Miss Marvel has unlimited potential. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows Marvel really wants to market this character. And again, we're talking about the Joker on the upside of this list, saying that the Joker has as much recognition and value as Batman because of his iconic stature. That's what a villain can be it, when it's really matched up right. You know, it's, it's Stone Cold Mr. McMahon. You have to have that heel for that face or the whole process doesn't work. And uh, I think Storm Ranger has that kind of potential. And it, the, these late printings are being cover price. I think if you see them at your LCS, you should grab them. Any, any of those issues, 5, 10, 11, don't even worry about the comics politics. I would grab them if they're cheap. Uh, I think Marvel is going to go long on this character. And some of these new characters, it's not taking much for them to go pop on the market. So this is one where... It's down maybe a bit in, in overall demand, um, but there's a lot of evidence out there that this character could be on the upswing very, very soon. I just can't believe you just compared Storm Ranger and Joker. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Potent and I'm not saying Storm Ranger could be Joker. I'm, no. just, <laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that's the value a villain has. And the problem that a lot of our newer characters is, we create new characters 
and then we don't have that nemesis for them. Spider Gwen doesn't have that nemesis. Miles Morales doesn't have that nemesis. Um, that 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 character that they're iconic with doing doing battle with and with Batman having the Joker that that their value there is that's the reason why there's more Batman movies than anything else. That's why the, that's why there's they're always going to be able to do Batman movies and that's why the Joker is the first villain to have his own film. But anyways, moving on into the next pick on the three down portion. This is probably pain to Jack to put this on here, but I'm sure he's going to sp- sell you on the buying opportunity and i think there is buying opportunity for this but i know this is one of jack's favorites and i'm just dragging it on and i'm just gonna tell you we have bloodshot on the cold list the week before the movie is releasing right yes well, week up. i'm gonna spin it with a tinge of panic so um so yeah so copies are selling for of both rise zero and eternal warrior for for i would say exceptionally low um we're talking like I'm seeing Rise Zero selling for like 15 bucks. I'm seeing Eternal Warrior sell for the 20s. Eternal Warrior was a, a solid 60s. Um, Rye was about 40 bucks. So these are the pre movie announcement prices, Brad. Um, now, is that because of flaws in whatever those auctions were? I don't know. I didn't analyze them to that level. Um, the reality is I'm looking at this going only a few copies have sold the week of the movie and they're selling for exceptionally low pricing. Dinesh Shambhasani, uh, you know, well-known former CEO of Valley and producer on the bloodshot movie. He posted from uh, C2E2 a few extremely low priced, like $40 in this is a con price. Eternal Warrior Force, which which threw me off because again, at conventions I was seeing this book 75, 80, 100. Um, so it tells me that while the trailer got people excited, that excitement has waned. Now, Brian, before we started recording, you mentioned that you haven't seen a lot of marketing, and that can do it. That really can do it because if you're not constantly reminded that this is something that you need to be paying attention to, you won't. Um, but this movie premieres, debuts, and theaters Thursday. Um, this video comes out Wednesday. We're a day away from the release of this movie. And I have said this, the Valiant Universe's value long-term rests on the release of this movie. This could not be bigger for Sony DMG for Valiant. Um, again, Valiant is owned by DMG, the part. Sony's partner, uh, the Chinese filmmaker. Um, this is a big moment for them, and everything about this trailer looks good. Everything looks like this movie could be successful, but um, the buzz is not strong. Yeah, I see this also. You never know. It could also be one of those ones that might not have a big box office, but then it gets picked up. People start watching it on digital blu-ray right and then you start Streaming. getting it on you know when it, some some of these movies build those cult, cult followings i say cult, i say cult, <laughs> cult cult followings that you never know um i'm anxious i'm gonna go see the movie i'm anxious to see it um i do like vin diesel he's not my favorite but it's a good popcorn yeah it's want to be entertained so just a turn your brain off, enjoy a little action, a little sci-fi. Um, it should give you some 80s, 90s nostalgia feels uh, if it's doing its job. Yeah. I just figured for all the reasons that you just mentioned, I would you'd probably be seeing more marketing. I've seen, like we said, I've seen some Facebook ads, some, yep. some Instagram ads, but nothing that's like you normally see for something that's going to be a, a box office or, hey, we really want to push this movie. But either way... Time will tell them. I guess we'll see. But shifting over to another movie property, movie comic book property, I should say, that's kind of cold right now. And I think that's cold just because of that Marvel marketing machine. It's always what's coming first, right? So we're seeing a bunch of Black Widow. Right. But right now, Eternals is on the downward swing. Yeah. And again, people only pay attention to so much. I would also say, while we're talking about movies, if you're not doing anything this weekend, 
go see Bloodshot, whether you're a Valiant fan or not, because supporting comic book movies is a good thing. If Valiant movies do well, your other favorite comic book has a better chance of having its movie get made. That's just a reality. Um, but, you know, so support comic books in, in film in general. But yeah, Eternals is that next big one. It feels like it, right? It feels like it's that next one that could be Guardians of the Galaxy or you know, uh, you know, just, just, just iconic, huge blockbuster film for whatever reason, maybe it's sexism and all of us, myself included, I'll say black widow doesn't feel that way. Uh, it just doesn't, it feels, I think it'll be a good movie. It feels like a movie you've seen before to me. It just, for whatever reason, I'm gonna go see it though. (laughs) Me too. But this is where I'm going to be honest about myself. This is how I feel about wonder woman. I don't get that level of hype for wonder woman. Um, so it may just be the female lead thing. Like it's not the same for the male perspective. I'm okay with that. So, but I'll enjoy it. I'll watch it. But Eternals is more the movie where you're like, okay, this is going to be some new thing that we're all get to be excited about. I like the fact that I don't know everything about the Eternals. I don't want to go back and study up the history of the Eternals. I like the fact that for once I can walk into a comic book movie and not sit there like a nerd comparing every single thing to the panels um i can actually walk in and enjoy it and that's what i really liked about guardians of the galaxy um that's what i enjoyed about ant-man was that they were kind of like characters i knew of but i wasn't super familiar with and i could just kind of sit back and enjoy but for whatever the reason eternals was one of the hottest properties coming out of like the d23 announcements and all when we knew that all of uh the the upcoming disney slate another thing i think that's gotten in its way though since then is disney plus brian because now we're talking about so many properties we're talking about she hulk and we're talking about vision and scarlet witch and we're talking about miss marvel and we're talking about moon knight we're talking about blade and we're and there's just so much and there's so many places to put your money i don't know if you guys out there are aware of the buying opportunities right now for eternals it's very rare that you get blue chip buying opportunities with a short window that can make you a high ROI. But I'm seeing mid-grade uh, Eternals 1 copies go in the 40s. That is pricing based on like That's back to like year. two years ago. Yeah, two, two years, years, right. Ago. Before the things got real hot, I'm seeing VF to near mint listings going in like the 70s. I'm seeing graded copies, 9.4s, go for 150, 160. I'm seeing 9.6s go for like 200 that is criminally underpriced then you go to the other keys because there's so many keys for this movie we're talking about issue two issue three issue two being the first appearance of the celestials issue three being the first appearance of cersei um issue five issue seven issue 11 these are all keys all of them are devalued a lot of them um those lesser ones fives and sevens and nines and elevens in mid grade, you're seeing them go sub ten dollars. And like Brian's very right. This, this is a couple of years ago pricing. I did not think we would get back here from where it went. Doesn't surprise me based on like we haven't seen a trailer, although apparently a trailer is imminent. So you know it's gonna hit like San Diego Comic Con. Oh, San Diego Comic Con or at the Black Widow movie, I could see it. It, it could see it happening. But either way, it's imminent, right? Supposedly it's done. Like the, the higher ups have already seen it. Um it's coming. So your window to do this isn't very big, but if you felt like you missed out on Eternals to all my investors out there, um, or to my collectors who just, you know, maybe you felt like you got a little priced out, you know, I'm not judging anyone's budget. Maybe you felt like you got a little priced out of Eternals number one, or maybe you wanted to upgrade your mid grade copy to a high grade copy. Now, maybe the last opportunity, think about this, Brian, that you ever have to do it at these pricing. Because once this movie comes out, what if this becomes the next Guardians of the Galaxy? You know, this, this, these prices that we're looking at for Cersei, who's Angelina Jolie, uh, for the Eternals 1, uh, for the first Celestials especially, um, that could be just out of this world. It could be, but I don't, I'm, I'm sure that a, a big handful of those books will drop back down a little bit, especially after the movie kind of comes and goes. We saw it with Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a bunch of those books that people were really high on. No, there's no, there's no doubt that there will be a drop after the movie. 
but I don't think there'll be a drop to the level it's right. at now. Because the level it's at now is the commoner has not heard of these characters. Once everyone's heard of these characters, once these toys are in stores, I don't think it'll ever hit a level where you'll be able to buy a... a People are going to be well aware of that Eternals once the you're movie. not. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to buy an Eternals one for sixty bucks in, in, in you know at a seven zero. I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Um, I think that it'll be a hundred and something dollar book forever. So there it is. That's the three up, three down. As always, let us know in the comments. We're putting comments up on the screen right now from our last video. So make sure you comment. Never know what to get featured. Plus. We always like to see what people think. What are your hot? What are your cold picks? What are you enjoying? What do you? It could be hot read. It could be hot artist. Could be whatever you think is hot and cold in comic books right now. We want to hear from you. So let us know in the comments. And with that being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we'll see you in the next video.